Today, I'm going to show you how to create Sally's Potion Ingredient Jars from the Nightmare Before Christmas. The things we will need to create Sally's Potion Bottles is three containers. So I have a glass urn style container here and I know it doesn't have the hinged lid. I couldn't find one that I felt like was the right shape. So this is the closest one I could find and I picked this one up at Hobby Lobby. We have a flask shaped glass bottle and this is actually a recycled bottle. It had rum or something in it at one point and then I added a black rubber cork to it. And then we have a glass cylinder container with a screw on lid here. And again, I picked that up at Hobby Lobby, but you could use a mason jar if you'd like or whatever. I just wanted it to have a nice clean cylindrical shape and a screw on lid. So I thought this was a really good match for that. Then to create all of the textures and finishes on the bottles, we are going to need various colors of gray and black paints. And I'm using acrylic paint. We are going to need some Mod Podge. And then we're going to use some black crepe paper or you could use black tissue paper, anything like that. Um, and then we're gonna use some paper towel. And the cheaper the paper towel, so it doesn't say like bounty or anything like that on it, you just want a nice texture. So um, I have that paper towel back here. And then I'm going to use some uh, batting here and we're gonna use that to create our frog's breath on the inside of our jar because there's actually a clear lid on here and I thought that'd be a really nice touch. And I'm going to spray that with some of the green spray paint. We are going to need some foam brushes and then to tint our Mod Podge, we're gonna end up needing some green and brown food coloring. I'm using gel food coloring, but you could also use liquid. And then we're gonna use some alcohol and brown metallic paint that we will put inside of the Worms Wart bottle. And then we're gonna need a cup, spoon, some, um, things to maybe put your paint in, things like that. So that, that's everything we're gonna need to actually create the finishes on the bottles. And then finally, we are gonna need our labels printed on sticker paper, and the link for this is in the description down below. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take our urn jar, which is going to be our deadly nightshade, and we are going to uncork it, and I've got gloves on because I just don't wanna get Mod Podge all over my hands. Um, and then we're going to Mod Podge on our um, black crepe paper, or you could use black tissue paper, anything like that. We just want a nice base that's gonna give us some texture and a little bit of color that we can then add on to with um, our paint. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our Mod Podge and we are just going to liberally brush it on um, sections of the glass. You don't wanna do all of the glass jar at once because it'll dry before you can actually adhere your crepe paper. So just like do it in strips and get your Mod Podge on here. And we're basically just gonna decoupage the jar. So now that we have a little strip on there, we're going to take our crepe paper and I just rough cut it to a size of the jar because we're gonna trim off the excess anyway. And I'm going to adhere my crepe paper to it. And then I'm going to brush the outside to get it to form to the jar even more. And we're just gonna to continue to do this until the jar is completely covered. Okay, so once you get to this point where everything has been decoupaged on, we can kind of smooth down any weird bumps we think we might see. And, and then up here at the top, I'm just going to take a little bit of my Mod Podge, and I am just going to re-go around the edge and just kind of smooth everything down so we still get that nice lip. And then that way I can cut off the excess on the inside of the jar so it will still seal. Now that we have everything completely decoupaged, including the top, we're gonna let this completely dry. So I would say let this sit for a good couple hours before we start to do anything else to it. We just wanna make sure that the Mod Podge and the paper completely dry all the way through. So then that way we have a nice hard surface to work with. Okay, so while our urn is drying, we're gonna go ahead and do the same decoupage process with our cylinder jar, except we are going to use um, paper towel instead of the crepe paper. Um, again, you could use just some like tissue paper, some old paper, whatever, but I find that the weave texture that's on this um, paper towel will make a really, really nice texture for our jar. So I'm just gonna decoupage this on just like I did the other one.
And once we get our jar completely decoupaged, we're going to let this, again, uh, dry for a good couple hours just so then that way we can um, trim up any of the excess so that the lid will screw on and then we can actually paint and finish up our bottle. Okay, so while our other two jars are drying, we're going to go ahead and tint our jar for our wormwort. So um, when Sally's making her soup, she actually uh, is pouring the wormwort and you can kind of tell it's almost like a green colored um, glass bottle. So we are going to tint our jar green. And we're going to do that with Mod Podge, a little bit of water, and some food coloring. And then we're going to bake it in the oven at 170 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the lowest setting that my oven will do um, for about 30 to 40 minutes, just so then that way it really seals that on. A lot of people, when they're tinting their jars, actually do the inside of the jar. Well, I want to be able to put some potion in there with the alcohol and some paint. So if I was to do that, the tinting on the inside of the jar is not permanent. It would end up coming off. So we are actually going to tint the outside of the jar. So to do that, we're going to take our cup, and I have put just a, about a tablespoon of water in there, and we are going to add a decent amount of Mod Podge to the cup. And we use the water so it thins it out a little bit. You don't want it to be um, 100% thick Mod Podge that you are trying to put on the outside of your container or you'll get really weird drips. So as you can see, we have our Mod Podge and some water. And then we're going to add our food coloring. Now, when you go to food color your tint, you want to make sure that it is darker than what you want it to maybe look like on the jar because it will... Um, change a little bit when it bakes in the oven. It can actually lighten your color as it makes it um, transparent. Now I am using the matte finish Mod Podge and that is so then that way it, it won't look completely frosted but it won't have as crisp clear see-through of a color as the glossy will. So that's why I opted to go for the um, matte finish. Now I'm adding some brown because I want this to be a nice dark green color. And then I'm just going to mix this up with my spoon here. And I wanna add some more green. Okay, as you can see, we have a nice olivey green color, and this will be perfect to tint our jar. Okay, so to do that, I have a plastic container here. You could use a plate, whatever. You could do it over a sink if you'd like, but I like to try to catch it because you can actually reuse it. Um, and then we are going to take our bottle, and all we're going to do is take our cup with the Mod Podge and we are just going to start to pour it over the whole bottle making sure to get the entire thing. And then we can kind of spin and rotate it, let gravity kind of help you. So now that our bottle is completely covered with the Mod Podge, we're going to go ahead and let this sit for about 10 minutes so that the excess can kind of come off of there. And if you see any bubbles, take a little toothpick or cooking skewer or something and just pop them so then that way they won't stay on your jar. Then we're going to pop this in the oven, like I said, for 30 to 40 minutes on the lowest setting your oven can go, which for me is 170 degrees Fahrenheit, and you'll see how this transforms. Okay, so my jar just came out of the oven and I let it cool for about 10 minutes and now we have this really great finish that has this like satiny look to it. It's almost frosted but not quite and I kind of like these little green drips we got. That's from some of the um, green food coloring that didn't dissolve completely, but I actually kind of like it. I think it added a nice effect. So now all we're going to do is take our funnel and our alcohol, and we are going to fill it up. And 
I want this to look like it's been used, so I'm only going to fill it this much. Um, but it's up to you. You can make yours different if you'd like. Then I'm going to take some of my brown metallic paint and add it to our alcohol. Cork it up. And then I'm going to give this a good shake. Okay. And as you can see, we get our really great swirling effect that we always get with our alcohol potions. And then we've got our worm's wart. So now I'm going to add my label and this bottle will be complete. Okay, so I have my label printed on sticker paper and I went around the outside edge with the matching marker like we normally do. I'm going to peel that off and we are just going to adhere this to our bottle. And there's our worm's wart. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take our batting, and I'm going to spray paint it with some green spray paint so it gets a real green, smoky look to it, so it'll mimic our frog's breath. And now we have our frog's breath. And now that both of these jars are completely dry, we can go ahead and start to give them their paint finishes. Okay, for the Deadly Nightshade jar, I'm going to take a little bit of a dark gray, and I'm just going to lightly go over parts of the jar so that it kind of hits the highlights, leaves some of the black. I want this very textured, almost clay-like quality to it. Okay, so as you can see, we got a nice um, gray wash texture over it because I haven't done the lid yet. So that way you can kind of see the difference between just the black and then with the gray additions on there. Okay, so now that both of these have been painted, I'm going to let these dry, and then I may go back and add just a few more little highlights to it. So while my Deadly Night shade is drying, we're going to go ahead and paint our frog's breath with a lighter gray. And again, we're going to go ahead and let this dry, and then we'll add a little bit of a darker color to give just a little bit of an accent to it. All right, now that these have dried, I'm going to go ahead and go back in with a little bit of a stone gray color. And I'm just going to very lightly hit some of these so that the higher spots get some of that paint. And then I'm going to go back over it. with a cloth and just rub some of the excess away. I just want it to give just a little bit of a highlight of some of the stone gray to the container.
and once again we'll let these dry. And now I'm going to take a really really dark charcoal color and again I'm just going to lightly go over my jar so it kind of makes that weave texture pop. And now that my texture is showing on my frog's breath jar, I'm going to go ahead and age up this lid just a little bit. And I'm going to use that same charcoal color. And I am just going to go around and like do a stamping pattern on the outside edge of this. Okay, so now that my jar is nice and dry and has this really great texture, I'm going to go ahead and take my label that I printed on sticker paper and again go around the outside edge with the matching marker and I am just going to peel the backing paper off and we are going to stick this onto our jar. Okay, so keep in mind that your label will not be perfectly flat because there's a textured surface underneath of it. So you're still going to have some creases and bumps, but those are because of the texture underneath. So I actually think it gives the label a really great quality, so it kind of meshes in with the texture of the jar. At this point, if you wanted, you could go around the outside edge with some puff paint or some cording or beads or anything like that, but I kind of like the textural natural quality we get of this and the simplicity of it so I'm going to leave mine the way it is. Now we're going to go ahead and take our batting that we painted green to be our frog's breath and we are just going to insert that into our jar so it has a nice little breathy smoky quality on the inside that mimics the frog's breath. And then we can take our lid and cap it up and we can see our frog's breath on the inside and now we can take our label and place it on the jar and once our labels are on all of our containers there you have it sally's potion ingredients perfect to make some worms wart soup these will be a great addition to our potion prop collection of Make Along the Way. So if you guys like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And we will catch you guys later. Thanks so much.